Okay, so we said in the previous video that a reward a user can receive between time intervals A and B is given by this formula, but this formula is not an efficient way to calculate the reward. So we derived a more efficient way of calculating the reward using this equation. I've mentioned that the first part of the equation can be stored in a single variable, and the second part of the equation can be stored per user also in a single variable. So let me walk you through an example and show you how it works. At t equals 7, Alice stakes 100 token. At t equals 9, Bob stakes 100 token. At t equals 14, Alice withdraws the 100 token. And at t equals 18, Bob withdraws the 100 token. The easiest way for me to figure out how this algorithm works is to go through an example and plug in some numbers. Let's start with an easy one. Let's track L of t the total amount of token staked in the contract. At t equals 7, Alice stakes 100 token. L of t will be updated after t equals 7, so at t equals 7, it is still equal to 0. At t equals 9, Bob stakes his 100 token. The total amount staked will be updated after t equals 9, so at this point, we have 100 token staked from Alice. At t equals 14, Alice withdraws 100 token. At this point, both Alice and Bob has 100 tokens staked. So in total, we have 200 tokens staked. Alice withdraws 100, but this will be updated after t equals 14. So the total is still 200. At t equals 18, Bob withdraws 100 token. L of t will be updated after t equals 18. So at this point, there are in total still 100 tokens staked by Bob. Okay, let's now calculate the left part of the equation for each t. Here we'll say s is equal to the left part of the equation times r. At t equals 7, l of t is 0, so s is also equal to 0. At t equals 9, l of t would have been equal to 100. That's the 100 stake from Alice for 2 seconds between t equals 7 and t equals 9. So to s, we will add r over 100 times 9 minus 7. At t equals 14, L of t would have been 200 for the time between 9 seconds over here and t equals 14. So to the sum, we will add r over 200 multiplied by 14 minus 9. And at t equals 18, L of t would have been 100 for the time between t equals 14 and t equals 18. So to s, we will add r divided by 100 multiplied by 18 minus 14. Okay, so let's now calculate the right side of the equation. This number will basically be the same as this, except we'll need to store the number per user when the user interacts with the smart contract. Here we'll say p of user to indicate that this value will be stored differently per user. At t equals 7, for p of user, so p of Alice, we will store s that is over here. So s over here for Alice will be equal to 0. At t equals 9, s will be equal to this value, and p of Bob we will store that value over here. At t equals 14, this is the s value, and for Alice we will store p of Alice equal to this number. And at t equals 18, we evaluate s and store p of Bob equal to this number. Once we have all these variables calculated, let's now calculate our balance from time between 0 and 14. This is the time that Alice withdraws her 100 token. How much reward will she get? This is the equation that we'll be using, and all of the numbers that we need is stored in this table. So how much reward will she receive? Well, she has 100 tokens staked, and we'll need to multiply this by s at t equals 14 and p of Alice. The value of s at t equals 14 is equal to this, which is the summation of all these values over here. So when we expand it, we'll get r over 100 times 9 minus 4 plus r over 200 times 14 minus 9 from over here. And this equation over here will get this value. And now we need to get this value, which is stored in PL Balis. The last time Alice interacted with smart contract is over here. And at this point, P of Alice was equal to 0. So this will be equal to 0. 
we simplify the equation and we get 4.5R for Alice. How about for Bob? How much reward will Bob get from t equals 0 to 18? Well, Bob had 100 tokens staked, and using this equation over here, we will find S and P of Bob. The value of S for Bob will be summation of all these values over here. So we're going to add this, we're going to add this expression, and we're going to add this expression, and we'll get this expression over here. This will correspond to this summation over here. To get this value for Bob, it will be stored in P of Bob. The last time Bob interacted with this smart contract was over here, and this will store the P of Bob. The S value at this point is equal to this, so we replace P of Bob with the value that you see over here. Simplify the math, and we get that Bob receives 6.5R. So that is an example of how storing one variable to keep track of this number and using the mapping to store a value per user to keep track of this number, we are efficiently able to calculate the amount of reward a user will receive. So far we've only seen a simple example, but what if Alice decides to stake more? Would the algorithm still work? Well, we can make a simple modification to the algorithm so that the calculation of reward still works. So when Alice's staking balance changes over here, what we do is we calculate the reward that Alice will receive up until this point using the same algorithm. And then we set P of Alice to the value of S over here. And basically that is how the algorithm for the synthetic staking reward contract works. In the next video, we will actually code the contract.